In this simulation, the supersonic airflow over SR-71 Blackbird aircraft is simulated. Supersonic speed is the speed of an object that exceeds the speed of sound. The sound speed is estimated to be around 343 meters per second in the dry air at a temperature of 20 Celsius. In this simulation, SR-71 aircraft experiences 446 meters per second speed, so the Mach number is 1.3. Plus, the angle of attack is assumed to be 2 degrees. This simulation focuses on using a pressure-based solver and a coupled pressure-velocity coupling algorithm to model compressible flows instead of having a density-based approach. The 3D geometry was imported and generated in design model software An SR-71 Blackbird aircraft geometry is imported and placed in an enclosure. In addition, an unstructured mesh grid was carried out using ANSYS meshing software and overall, 1,744,000 elements were generated. Moreover, the tetrahedron mesh grid was converted to polyhedron in ANSYS format. At the very beginning of the simulation, we should import the mesh file. So from file tab, follow read, mesh, and then look at the mesh file that you've received with the other files and open it. As the first step, select Make Polyhedra from the upper toolbar. This option converts 3D tetrahedral mesh grids to polyhedrals and can be very applicable for mesh grids with higher than 1 million cells. There are several assumptions that need to be considered in this simulation. First, we use pressure-based solver type instead of density-based. Although the fluid is compressible, we have an alternative to use pressure-based solver type along with coupled scheme and ideal gas behavior of the density. Next, we want to simulate in a steady state condition, which means uh, the variables like velocity and pressure may differ from point to point but do not change with time. And also, we ignore the gravitational effects, so just leave the gravity checkbox unchecked. For the next step, expand the model section and double click on energy. Since we want to see the temperature distribution at last, we need to enable energy equation. So the solver will solve energy equation as well as the flow equations. Then click on viscous bottom. In the appeared window, select spalart almaras one equation viscous model. This model is a relatively simple one equation model that solves a model transport equation for the kinematic eddy turbulent viscosity. The Spallard Almaras model was designed especially for aerospace applications involving wall bandwidth flows and has been shown to give good results for bandwidth layers subjected to adverse pressure gradient. It is also gaining popularity in the turbo machinery applications. In the Spallard Almaras production section, enable a strain vortex debase. As a result, ANSYS Fluent will compute the value of the formation tensor from an, a specific equation. In the next step, we should define the working fluid properties from material section. After expanding it, you can see that the software defined the air by default, so we just need to edit the properties. In appeared window, change the density type to ideal gas. So the gas law is as following. The density is a function of pressure and temperature. We also know that the viscosity isn't constant and change with time. So we use Sutherland's law. In three coefficient method, we should define reference viscosity, temperature, and also effective temperature. The default values fit with air.
After that, we need to apply the fluid on our fluid domain. So from cell zone condition part, open the solid. Select air in material name part and apply that. Next, we should define boundary conditions. The first boundary condition is inlet with velocity inlet type. Air enters the domain with 446 meters per second with 2 degree angle of attack. So we should multiply the velocity to cosine and sine of this angle. So set the velocity specification method to components and multiply the velocity mean uh, 446 multiplied by cosine of 2 and enter for x velocity and also do the same thing with sine of the 2 and enter for y velocity. The turbulence viscosity ratio equals 10. At the outlet we've got a pressure outlet type boundary condition. In this section, the most important parameter is gauge pressure, which is zero. It means that the fluid leaves the domain to the atmosphere. And also, the backflow turbulence viscosity ratio equals 10, in case there is any backflow to the domain. In thermal tap, the backflow total temperature defined as 293.15 Kelvin. So if there is any backflow, its temperature is specified. The last boundary condition, I mean the aircraft, defined as wall. As you can see, it's an stationary wall with no slip shear condition. And also, there isn't any heat flux on it. At the last step at setup section, we get to reference values. These values are used only for post-processing. You can control the reference values that are used in the computation of non-dimensional coefficients. For example, for force coefficients, we use reference area, density and velocity. In this simulation, we don't need any report of non-dimensional coefficients, so we skip it. The pressure-based solver allows us to solve our flow problem in either a segregated or coupled manner. This pressure-based coupled algorithm offers an alternative to the density-based. Plus, it solves momentum and pressure-based continuity equations together. In addition, we prefer to use second-order often for discretization because of its higher accuracy. In control part, there are some values known as under relaxation factors. They are used to suppress oscillations in the flow solution that results from numerical errors. By reducing these values, the convergence may slow down, but still, they help to prevent any divergence. So change the pressure and momentum to 0.3. To check the convergence of the solution, we almost always check the residual values, which will be discussed later. But it can be a trustable criterion. So we define a parameter to monitor in each iteration from before definitions part. So when it gets to a constant value, we can be assured of the convergence. In this simulation, the drag force can be a good parameter to monitor. But here is a point. Since the drag force is a global variable indicating certain overall conditions, it may converge while local conditions at a specific point are still varying from one iteration to the next one. To take it into account, we need to define a vertex behind the aircraft to monitor the velocity. In order to do that, right click on report definition and define a new force drag report. In the open window, select a name and also a drag force type. Notice that the drag force is tangent to the flow direction, so we should define the force vector and enter cosine and sine of 2 for x and y direction. Now we should define the report for velocity of a vertex. 
But before doing anything, we should create the point. So from surface part on the upper toolbar, create a point. Define the coordinates as 3.5 for x and 1.5 for y direction and name it 0.4 or anything else. Now from report definitions part, new surface report, make a vertex average report. In the appeared window, select velocity for field variable and also from surfaces part, click on point 4 and make the report. Now let's get back to residuals. After each iteration, the solver records the values. So the reported value in the console part represent the differences between two consecutive iterations. If the values gets below this absolute criterion we defined in this window, the calculations will stop. At last, before a static calculation, we need to set initial values from initialization part. By using hybrid initialization, the initial values will be computed from all cells of domain. At last, open one calculation part and enter 1000 number of iterations. For post-processing, before making any contour, we should define a plane in the desired uh, coordinates. So let's have a look at the geometry. As you can see, we need a plane at the middle of the geometry in x-y direction and also one of them in y-z direction. To put the plane at the middle of the geometry in x-y direction, the z should be defined as zero. Create another one in y-z direction with x equal 3.5. Now from graphics part in results section, I can draw contours and vectors. I want to see the pressure distribution on the xy middle plane which we have defined earlier. So I should set the variable from the contours of the drop-down list to pressure and then select the plane. By changing the variable, I can have another contour and do it another time for the YZ plane. Another option provided by Ansys Fluent for post processing is vectors. The appeared window is just like contours window with more options. Just select velocity on middle xy plane. Notice that the vectors are shown but they are very small that we can't see them. By using a scale and increase that, we can have better view. In this project, the Mach number of the flow was assumed to be 1.3 and there was supersonic flow over the aircraft. Due to fluid compressibility, a density-based solver type should be higher. Instead, we came up with using pressure-based solver type and coupled velocity pressure coupling algorithm, an ideal gas behavior of the density simultaneously. Notice that the viscosity was a function of temperature, so we used the Sutherland model. As contours show, there is a shockwave around the aircraft's nose and engines. It causes an extreme velocity and pressure gradient. Therefore, the density experiences different values and the compressibility assumptions of the sense. Furthermore, as expected, there is a direct correlation between pressure, density, and temperature. 